What happened here, March 25, 1911? In New York City, across Washington Square Park, stands the Brown Building at 23 Washington Place in the heart of New York University. Here, in what was once the Ash Building, a fire resulted in the deaths of 146 people, mostly young immigrant women working for the Triangle Shirtwaist Company. At the time, it was the deadliest workplace disaster in the United States and the spark that ignited the government to improve worker rights and building safety. The year is 1911. New York City is the second largest city in the world. The Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty have been erected for 25 years. New York has been constructing a subway system for almost 10 years, and the Queensboro and Manhattan bridges have just completed construction. New York City already has many buildings well over 10 stories constructed with little or no safety in mind, including the Singer Tower and the 10-story Ash Building completed in 1901 for Joseph Ash. It was thought to be fireproof because of its iron and steel frame and terracotta fireproofing. He chose not to have a sprinkler system and opted for the city regulation of having a full water bucket accessible in case of fire. The owners of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory rented the top three floors after having had their factories burned twice already, possibly for insurance fraud. Several years leading up to the fire, unions, such as the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, held demonstrations in the streets protesting for equal rights. Not only to allow for voting, but a shorter workday, fair and equal pay, and improved working conditions. They were powerful enough to organize a 20,000 person march, but work condition improvement was slow or non-existent as city government and police officers were being bribed by factory owners, such as the Triangle Shirtwaist owners Max Blank and Isaac Harris, to do nothing as paid strike breakers beat the women protesters. That all changed on the afternoon of March 25, 1911, at 23 Washington Place in New York City. Over 600 people were in the Ash Building at the time. The 8th through 10th floors packed elbow to elbow with mostly young women in cloth-covered cutting tables and tissue paper templates hanging overhead when someone on the 8th floor tossed a cigarette into a bin of cloth scraps under a table. Slowly, the women took notice of the smoke. There were no required water buckets, but the manager took a fire hose from the wall and approached the growing fire, only to find the hose was rotten and the valve rusted shut. Women left their workstations for the stairwells and the elevator. As they began to choke on the smoke, they found the stair doors locked. They managed to break through the door and notify the 10th floor. Attempts were made to notify the 9th floor, but within five minutes the flames had cut off all communication. As the elevator stopped at the 8th floor and filled it with a dozen women choking on the smoke, nine floor workers found their way to the stairwell door only to find it locked from the outside as well. They began screaming for someone to open the door, pounding and clawing it, finally panicking and climbing over one another, ultimately burning, jumping from windows or succumbing to the smoke. Very few from the 9th floor would survive. Firefighters arrived quickly but their ladders only reached the sixth floor, a full three stores below those most in danger on the ninth. As the temperatures rose and the smoke thickened, the elevator would make a return trip. Twelve more girls from the eighth floor squeezed inside for the 80-foot vertical drop. Others, mostly from the tenth floor, including the owners, found the fire escape and climbed to the roof 100 feet over the street. From there, they used ladders left by painters to escape to an adjoining building. However, that route didn't last long, as the heat from the flames softened the metal, twisting and stretching from the people's weight and finally crumbling. Two dozen people dropped to their deaths. Others, having missed the third and last elevator trip, ran from the approaching flames into the windows for air. But being unable to escape the heat and the drapes catching fire, they took a chance and jumped over 80 feet to the firemen's nets. The distance of the fall and multiple people jumping at once made the nets useless as they passed through the fabric to their deaths. The elevator failed on its fourth and final trip, leaving the remaining workers stranded, and having found the doors locked, the smoke choking and blinding and the heat too great, burning their clothes, skin, and hair, three dozen women leapt into the dark elevator shaft and to their deaths. Onlookers watched helplessly as people chose between burning to death or jumping to death. Some that chose to jump broke through sidewalk skylights and continued their fall into the building cellars below. From the moment the fire started at 4.40 p.m. to the last death and the fire being under control, only 18 minutes had passed. After bodies were gathered and identified by families, 
large processions filled the streets. Newspapers around the nation printed witness testimonies of useless fire escapes collapsing and locked doors trapping workers inside. Soon, union members found the support for workplace safety they had been demanding as tens of thousands joined them in protests demanding more workplace safety rules and better enforcement of the current rules. And finally, workplace safety became a priority of not only New York City, but the nation as well. Another demand was for the arrest of those accountable for the Triangle Shirtwaist factory deaths. Several arrests were made, including Triangle Shirtwaist owners Max Blank and Isaac Harris, as it was learned, without a sprinkler system they should have had full buckets of water nearby, and that the doors were locked to prevent the women from stealing scraps of fabric. They were the only persons ever charged with a crime, but later acquitted by a jury of first and second degree manslaughter, as it could not be proven to the jury who locked the doors. However, several families won a civil suit against Blank and Harris. They were ordered to pay victims' families $11,000. That's about $330,000 in today's dollars, or almost $2,300 per victim. In total, 146 people died. Of those, 123 were women and young girls. 58 people jumped to their deaths on the sidewalks below, and 36 were found stacked in the elevator shaft. The remaining died of smoke or the fire itself. The average age of the victims was 21, with the youngest being 15 years old. The Ash Building is now called the Brown Building and still stands at 23 Washington Place, New York, New York, over 100 years after the tragic Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire on March 25, 1911. If you would like to see more What Happened Here videos, Please support the channel by liking and sharing the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you. Credits and links to more information, including the list of victims, are in the description.